you've got the knowledge worker industry, which has been traditionally quite well served by technology. Big platform names, Salesforce, SAP, Kinker, solving a range of these sort of digitization automation challenges, right, speeding up efficiencies. But we're in the desktop worker space, and actually that's still 80% of the global workforce. They just don't sit behind a desk to do their work. Hospital workers, lab technicians, restaurant operators, store facility managers. They could be doing transactional, routine, manual work in a deskless fashion. However, the complexity of the work can go right the way up to a surgeon in a hospital. Seventy-three percent of all work that's conducted by the deskless worker at the moment is conducted through paper-based uh, checklists. If not paper, then it's going to be a spreadsheet. We all know what the we all know the uh, limitations of spreadsheets. And there are some limited vertical solutions that might solve for one specific use case. So for example, how do we do um, you know, inventory planning or production planning only? But it doesn't really span across an end-to-end -end place. So the situation you end up with at the moment for a lot of organizations, especially the more, the more mature, larger enterprises, especially in the spaces we, think, we, 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 we play in, is that they're very hierarchical by nature. So they have command and control at their core, and at best, they become a compliance reporting engine, what happened in the past, and then report it up. And that's about it. But what we see these days, and what's needed, and why a lot of these companies are being disrupted by you know, digital native organizations, is you need something that's proactive, forward thinking, able to respond in real time with growth and continuous improvement at its core, right? So the agility of the operating model becomes king. How does the Check It system, the platform, work? We call it the four Cs. So capture, connect, collaborate, and comprehend. What does that mean? Well, capture. Traditionally, it's, there's, there's very little data that's coming out. Why? Because it's often analog, yeah, paper-based, or it's ad hoc, people are doing work and activities and it's not actually being tracked or monitored. So what we're doing is we're capturing that data into a digital format at the base layer. By then doing that, we're connecting people, places, things, workflows together under one digital roof. And once you've done that, you then enable people to collaborate more effectively with each other in real time and simultaneously. So you think of the efficiency gains that come when, it, when people can simultaneously do work rather than as it used to be, which is sequential activity. And then all this data, stored up in the cloud is then represented at the regional and the senior level uh, through, through dashboarding, through sophisticated dashboarding, which we'll see in a bit. But this is driving operational insights and analysis, right? So you're then, as a, either a C-suite level, you're able to make, you're able to pull certain business levers to make more strategic change in your organization. It could be about brand positioning or sales opportunities, lost sales opportunities. And at the regional level, you're, you're monitoring KPIs performance in real time of the way your people are doing work, and then you can enact change to feed it back into the system. The platform seems quite spurious, it's on the cloud, but the, how it works inside the hands of a worker is pretty much like this. It's on your phone, it's an app on your phone, or it's a memo, which David's got over there, um, for workers. So that's, that's how they do their work, and that's prompting the kind of activities they need to do, which have been transcribed on the platform very easily. It guides them through the steps they need to take to complete their, their, their work and their activities. And of course, it's tracking everything they're doing. Right? And they're able to evidence things through photo capture, barcode scanning, all this kind of stuff to get a much more informed picture of the way their operations are working. We've always been pretty strong in the in sort of IoT space in, in terms of connected sensors. We've got Fridges, freezers, hot holds, vaccine storage, bloods. We're having, to, we're having to constantly send people to check on those and when they're outside of thresholds, we're having to throw away a lot of stuff. So to be able to monitor that automatically, feed that back into the system, remove the human from the process there, is, is very valuable for our clients. They all capture temperature or sometimes humidity or pressure or, or, or other environmental um, parameters and they monitor them. You can plot a graph on them and they'll tell you when something's out of, out of whack. The ability to take things that happen in the real world in sensors initially and use that to guide people to do something about what's happened. I think that's a huge change and it represents 
opportunity for the future of intelligent operations bringing people and assets together. But I would add that that is made even more powerful by the job sharing feature, which actually means that when this happens, you haven't just got one person working on it, you can have a team of people collaborating to get things done. You're creating those smart assets, so those automated monitoring solutions, and you're now automating the data and the actions back into our platform. So that allows for this real-time sort of feedback mechanism between assets, people, work and activities, and we think this is going to be very beneficial for our clients. When you need to add new activities, new tasks and new processes, you can, anyone can do it. It's just like moving Lego blocks around. So, very, so it doesn't rely on extensive customization work from, from someone like ourselves to keep coming back in, which, when we look at some of our other competitors, is often a problem. When you speak to the clients, why is it so expensive for them? Well, because they have to keep paying someone else to come in and do the development work. So that's very appealing. The ROI is less time wasted at the coalface, more efficiency at the coalface, and actually that in itself is often enough to pay for the system by itself, just the less, the reduced time of, of doing mean, sort of routine tasks. If you can automate them and make them more efficient or reduce supervision time. But then it's about process efficiency as well. It's about getting those, increasing the quality of those processes and the payback on, on, on that as, as we just talked about. And then the last one is agility, ability to change, right? Because COVID comes along, you want to roll out a whole bunch of new processes, you want to reconfigure your business, you can just do that and it's done. We've got, I think it's about 400 NHS sites that we're in for temperature monitoring in the UK and hundreds of sites in America as well in business, places like the, the plasma, the blood plasma business, right? All using temperature monitoring. So this is a great opportunity to bring in now our workflow technology to those customers and introduce them to it. Once they start using it to handle alerts, we can also show them the benefits for their wider operations. So commercially, that's a huge, huge opportunity. In the short term, the work we're doing on iOS to help make sure that our app is available on the Apple platform is, is really important, especially for some of the things we're doing in North America. I think continuing the theme of bringing in a, a smart assets, then the ideas of bringing in uh, data from third-party sensor networks is also going to make a big difference. And we're doing a lot on data, right? We're going to continue to improve how we can bring smart data to, to, into, into dashboards, smart algorithms to improve how people respond to the data they're getting. That's at the heart of what we do, so that's also you know, super exciting. If you look at individual components of our system, we, yes, we have a lot of competitors, but in terms of the totality of Check It, we don't have competitors. We don't see anyone who's offering an end-to-end -end stack. That's the important thing to bear in mind. You know, I've, so I've had a, quite a few different client interactions where they've got two or three providers. So someone's doing the temp some temperature monitoring. It's not even automated. And it's got its own like, uh, you know, um, support center that's filling in. Someone else is someone else is doing some element of task management, but not a really inclusive one. And someone else is trying to help them do the reporting on it. It's pretty inefficient, right? So the fact that you can tie all that together as one is a bit of a difference. So that's, that's, but, but, but people recognise the opportunity for sure. So it's something that a really big SaaS business would recognise. So we're looking at um, a really good structure of a follow the sun approach. So we can provide a global service to people all over the world. We're providing a consistent service. We're providing level one, level two, level three support, which is properly triaged. We're going to be providing um, self-help functions for customers because our research shows that actually a lot of customers like to find the answer to their own problem. We're providing some really good training. We're providing online training modules. Um, so a whole range and raft of different solutions to provide a really good world-class support function.